Hello, and welcome to Modern Art Workshop for Tweens and Teens. Today we'll be doing block prints, and we'll start off by looking at artist Ernst Barlock. This is Ernst Barlock, a talented sculptor and playwright from Germany who lived from 1870 to 1938. In addition to writing and sculpting, he also did woodcut prints, like this one called the Destitution. A woodcut is made by carving an image into wood. The wood is then covered with black paint or ink and a piece of paper is pressed onto it to make the image. Barlock was part of the Expressionist movement, which took place in the early 20th century. Rather than being realistic and showing a scene as it actually is, Expressionism aims to achieve an emotional effect, sometimes through distortion and exaggeration. Barlock served in the German army during World War I, and the people in this picture are likely people who are trying to flee the danger of the war. Here's another example of a woodcut called Ode to Joy. You can see the distortion in the stretching of the body and the facial expression. Again, the aim is to express the feeling rather than a realistic representation. For our project today, you don't need to be expressionist unless you want to. Here's what you'll need for today's craft. Craft foam, watercolor paints or tempera paints, water, a paintbrush, and a sharp pencil. And don't forget the paper towels. So in this project, the wood is going to be our craft foam. And you can get different kinds of craft foam. This is very thin, and you might end up accidentally making holes in it. So if you have thicker craft foam, that works a little bit better. And what you're going to use for your knife for carving is the tip of a pencil. So make sure your pencil is sharpened, or you can use another kind of sharpened stick and I'm just going to start by making a simple design. I'm going to make a flower. The next step is to take some paint. I have watercolors here, so I am going to start with those and I think I'll do red first. And I'm just gonna lightly put that red color on top. The great thing about this project is you can use your designs over and over, and you can even put several colors on top of each other. So let's try this simple one first. I'm going to take the paper and put it over the design, and then just press lightly and rub it so that the paint is picked up by the paper. We'll see how that turned out. Not bad. If I didn't like that or I decided I wanted another color, no problem. You might want to wipe off your foam, but this is pretty clean. Um, you could take a paper towel and wet it and just get that extra color off of there. And now I think I will try a darker color. So wet your brush. Let's try, no, I, yes, let's try this blue. And again, we'll paint it on there. I could try putting it on top. I think I'll put it next to it. Let's see if it's different if I put 
the print down on the paper and press. So another fun thing about this craft is you never know what you're going to find when you look at your print. And you can try different ways of printing. Paper on top, foam on top. Let's see. I think I like it better when the paper is on top. But here's something else you can do, and that is do two prints together. So I'll take this kind of light greenish color and put it on my flower again. And I'm going to turn the paper over and sort of match it up. It doesn't have to be perfect though. And see what happens. I'm pressing it and pushing it. Now you can't really tell that I had a different one, but I do like the way the other color fills in the empty spaces. Here's one I did a while back. You can't really see the design because of the dark color of the foam, but it's a leaf. And I will show you what that looks like. This green first. And I did this one by using straight lines and poking holes. We'll take our paper again, put it down and press. And there's your leaf. If you don't have watercolors, you can use tempera paint. But um, because it's thicker, go a little bit lightly with it. You don't use too much, or it might just fill in all of your lines and holes, and then you won't be able to see your design. So let's use this leaf again. If the paint's too thick, you can add a little bit of water to it. Okay, I've got a new piece of paper, and let's try that leaf I did with the tempera paint. See how that turned out. Okay, so you can see the design. You can also do more than one color at a time. Let's say I wanted to make this look like a fall leaf. I'll do a little bit of orange. A little bit of red. And I'm cleaning out my brush in between, and I'm going to do a little bit of green. Let's see how that looks. I missed a little spot in there. I'll just fill it in. Hmm, I'm not sure I like the colors on the outside, but you could cut it out if you wanted. Now the cool thing about this 
is you can make things like this for cards and use them over and over. I made this one a few years ago and I still have it. And here are some things, some leaves I did several years ago. And you can see you can try all different kinds of colors over and over. Here's one I did of a tree and some hearts with blue and yellow. And here's a similar flower that I did. I think I used thicker paint with this though. And here's a trick to know if you do words. I decided to do the word play, but notice that it's backwards. That's because when you print it, it'll turn out forwards. So let me show you how to do a word the easy way. You could look in a mirror, but that's sort of difficult. So what I will do is write the word on a piece of paper first. Write your message in a dark color and then turn it over and take your sharp pencil and start tracing the letters. And it's okay if you break through the paper as long as you can see your message indented on the other side. And this is what it looks like after I've gone over it again, this time with a pen. And there's your birthday message. And here it is in triplicate. And you don't have to use white paper for every print. You can use any color you want. If you're going to use a dark colored paper, a thicker paint would work best. This one I did with acrylic. I love this craft because there's so much experimenting you can do with different colored paints, different thicknesses of paints, different colored paper, and you can use the stamps over and over again. Just play and have fun with it.